We put 100 horsepower into a six foot jet boat and today we wanted to run up a river full of rocks, logs, and sandbars. So we're going to build some custom armor to give us the best chance of surviving this adventure. Next time I say something's gonna be 5,000% easier, check my map, I'm not good at it. The time has finally come to make the mini jet boat, the micro jet boat, able to blast over rocks and go up creeks. So we have here, 3 8 thick UHMW plastic. Standard size jet boats typically use like half inch uh, plastic, but this is a tiny one, so we went a little bit thinner. I have to take all the internals out of here, the seat and the engine and stuff, so that I can get at the whole bottom of it, and also it would be easier to flip it around. <laughs> I don't even know for sure if the engine will come out. I'm fairly certain that I made it with just enough clearance, but I cannot actually guarantee that because I've never tested it. And there's some kind of consistency between all the gas, but... You got her. Yeah. Just had to unbolt the plate from underneath it. And then it came right out. Yeah, it's just a flex in those rubber motor mounts that allows it to bounce up and down. Which is fine, we just need a little more clearance. Now that we got it upside down, it's time to uh, start figuring out the shape of this, and as usual, ye old cardboard-aided design! It's getting there. Um, it's gonna be a little weird because I wanna go out to the very edge here, just because this boat's so small. Um, and vulnerable. I realized up front here, I don't know that I'm gonna be able to do that unless I make it a separate piece on this little bit here. I think that ought to do the trick for the, uh, the old CAD. Now I'll un tape it. Obviously, this is just an approximation and some adjustments will be required. I'm not quite sure what to mark this with because it is black and so are my Sharpies. Oh yeah, still totally visible. Let's see how the uh, the old circular saw likes cutting. It actually stands for ultra high molecular weight, but uh, unbelievably heroic massive wakes. That's what's gonna happen when we're done. <laughs> Nice! Looks like something. What? I'm not sure. Looks like something. And done. 
Nice. So some pretty decent cuts around there. Yeah, well that was just roughed in. mess it all up. I have to buy a whole new sheet to try again. Yeah, that would be really unfortunate. I mean, I guess I could like cut it in half and do two separate pieces or something if I really... Uh, here comes the stressful part where I just drill a bunch of holes in my boat. Drilling holes in a boat. Not really a good plan. I chose a size of um, drill bit that's so accurate that, that like threaded into the aluminum. Just a smidgen. This one's in a really easy to reach location. Check it out. I have a few screws in here just to uh, kind of hold this in place while I ponder things. And what I've been pondering is this edge here. Right now, you can see it's just a completely flat plane. And this stuff is obviously extremely sturdy, so it's very, very difficult to bend. But I took a scrap here, and I just scored it with the utility knife, and then, you know, bent it over the edge of the table. And you can see it just kind of cracked, which is fine, because it left this side, you know, still intact, a thin layer. And both pieces are gonna be bolted down, so even if it were to totally separate, it wouldn't be a problem, but that's unlikely. So anyway, I think I'm gonna do that in a few places on here. This area here, obviously it has a little bit of a bend, but I don't think that one really matters if it's a sharp bend. So these back sections here can just bend down gradually because those are just my little trim tabs. I just realized that I can kind of figure this out based on the welds on this because um, everywhere that's possible when they made this hull, you know, they would have made every bit out of a single piece without welds where possible. And that right here, where my fingers are, is where this goes from being bent to welded because of the curvature of the hole. So if I go that same distance, roughly, somewhere in here, I could probably get away with a little bit more, something like that. I know that that section of this can be bent, and then from here forward, it has to be cut. To uh, make it so that I can bend slash break this, I'm just gonna set the skill saw, set the, uh, set the saw here at, um, you know, quarter inch or so. So it'll go just over halfway through this. I'll just cut that line and see what happens. Now, I have to cut this all the way through on that side. Probably gonna take a fair bit of force to bend that. Well, I know, we'll put it in the metal brake. Mm, yes. Yeah. Never work. A little bit of pressure from some bolts and that should pull right in. So this is our new project that we're gonna announce next week, which has a hitch that we can tow the jet boat on and it's road legal. So while Ethan's finishing up the jet boat, I'm here on OnX. I'm looking for some local trails wide enough for this thing 
that we can take the jet boat near some water. Steven, are you earning the boat being named after you right now? Uh, no, I'm failing. <laughs> well, it worked eventually. It just took a few tries. Ooh, that countersink is premium. So I can't screw this part down here because that's into the gas tank. So I'm gonna make a tab to hold it down, but for now, so it stays. Look at that. That's nice. Yeah, not bad, huh? rasp thing they're often used for like drywall for like making fine adjustments to the edge of drywall you can use it for wood too but it works really well for just shaving a smidgen off of this that's way better than your knife yeah that works surprisingly well <clears throat> when you can actually get like a just a small peel off of it so it peels away from the knife and doesn't create too much friction. It just shaves right off. Just, uh, you know, finding the best tools to get the job done. It's always, you never know, you never know what's gonna work best until you do it. Are you gonna caulk the seam when you're done, or is it gonna be probably? Much? I mean, it's pretty close, but yeah, I'll probably put some silicone or something in there just to keep it nice and smooth for the water. I think I'm gonna be really interested to drive this thing now because I have a feeling it's gonna be a lot more drifty. Yeah. Oh, feel because this like this used to be a sharp plane right here, and now it's just kind of rounded. This is still pretty pointy, so that should help you know keep you going straight, but. And the sides are still just as rigid if you were to be catching those on the water, but it's just, it's just so slippery. Yeah. I have a feeling it's going to be, it'll do, do mad donuts. And this being flush, I think is the biggest difference. That's going to make, yeah, that's going to make the biggest difference on speed for sure. Finishing up the last few bolts uh, to hold this plastic down, and on that side, I got this seam nice and perfect. Uh, on this side, my cut ended up a little wonky, so I have a little bit of a gap here. But rather than squeeze this in and close the gap, and then leave this exposed, I'm just gonna follow the outside edge, and I'll just fill that in with some sort of gap filler. Why am I doing each and every one of these countersinks by hand? because I've learned that this plastic, if you use a power one, unless it only can go the depth that you want, it'll just whoop, suck itself right through and go way too deep. in, at least all the ones that I think I'm going to put in there for now. Now I'm going to make these tabs here um, out of probably this here chunk of aluminum. Just shear off some little little bits uh, just, just so they overlap that by maybe half an inch. Look 
that. It even bent them into a nice little arc for us. Perfection. Almost what we need too, right there. Pretty close. Should be. Yeah. Is that what you were hoping for? More or less. Pull that twist out of it some maybe. Yeah. Oh, you know, sand it down a little. With all of our vast combined knowledge of boats here. Lack of knowledge. That's what I mean by vast combined <laughs> okay. knowledge, yes, yeah. Anyways. Uh, the question is, do we trim off this little bit of excess plastic here uh, because it might like tend to catch if you're going sideways? Or do we leave it on because it might tend to give you more planing ability at speed to stay up on plane on the surface of the water? I think it can only add stability. That's kind of my thought. I'm just gonna add the nuts to all those, huh? Yeah. Seal them up. Seal them up, and then put all the working pieces back in. You got nylon washers, or how uh, are you sealing it? I have nylock nuts. That's not a washer, though. No. Figure we put a little dab of. A little dab will do ya. That's what they say, isn't it? Yep. That is the word on the streets. A dollop of cock. Oh, yep. That's Thanks. exactly what we're doing here. Yep. And it might even help the stainless nuts from galling on the stainless bolts. Wow, I got lucky with that one next to the shifter mount. Look at that, or the, tr look at that. This little plate right here, I put in here to hold the oil tank um, for the for the uh, two-stroke oil, and uh, then I deleted it and went premix because weight reduction, simplification, more reliable. And uh, then I used it as a battery tray, but uh, I'm going to do a different thing with that when we put this back together. So I'm going to cut that out because there's two bolts that are kind of underneath it that I can't get the nuts on right now. About getting ready to put the engine back in, and uh, luckily I noticed this before we put gas in it. Oh, I drilled a hole in the fuel line. Okay, that went in way easier. Got the engine all bolted in, and I put a couple of washers under the engine mounts so that it doesn't vibrate on the hole like it used to. I also trimmed a little chunk out of that like center keel thing inside the hole and shaved a little bit off the underside of the engine mount plate, but I went for the trifecta, did all three, so it's just a smidgen higher and we won't have any more vibration because that was really irritating. I was just about to put this muffler back in, uh, which is more of really just a resonator. But then I thought to myself, it's kind of heavy and it doesn't do much to muffle it. Not that I really need this thing to be quieter, it sounds good, but I thought maybe I should look around and see if there's something lighter and um, a better muffler. And I went and looked and I got this. It's a muffler from an ATV. Um, it's pretty close to the same diameter internally. No restriction whatsoever. It's a straight pass through, just a glass pack muffler. And also what really got me thinking about it is I looked at this and I had it mounted in such a way that there's a little bit of, it's, it's straight through, but there's a little, like baffle in there and I think I might have had it backward um, in the sense that the baffle would have been like causing undue turbulence. So I'm gonna see if I can find a easy way to mount this in there. It fits lengthwise. I designed myself up a little cap to um, adapt that new muffler. Wow. 
look at there. Hey, the bolt holes even line up. What do you know? New and improved muffler. Uh, forgot to weigh it to see how much lighter it is, but it's considerably lighter. Plus, cut out that chunk of hose, so even more weight reduction. This is the battery I had in there, simply because we had it laying around uh, and it worked. 250, 300 cranking amps. Well, this battery is 500 cranking amps and it weighs about a quarter as much. It goes to 10 and then it says error. Hang on, we need a different scale. Two pounds, 5.5 ounces. So even if this battery weighed only 10, that's still four times the weight. 17 and a half pounds. Dang. That's the other one, I two pounds, five ounces. Two and a third pounds. Oh wow, that's a good amount of So weight. that right, just the battery, we lost 15 pounds out of the back of this yeah, thing. That's, that's ridiculous. That's... I've been looking at this intake grate, figuring out how to modify it, and uh, ultimately came to the conclusion that that's the wrong answer. And instead I should make a new one, so that this one can be saved as is for blasting around in the lake with maximum intaking of water. So here's the solution. Done, Barbie grill, intake grate. No, I'm just kidding. But I am gonna make it out of steel instead of aluminum because uh, I have more steel and it's gonna be easier and uh, it'll be more durable for bouncing around on rocks. And designing it from scratch, I can make it all the right way to begin with, instead of a complicated compromise of combining things. So the plan is to have these three here be these, this thicker, 3 16 plate come out from this to this edge and then make a plate that wraps around this that I can then weld all the other plates to. Had I known when I started building this jet boat what I know now about jet boats, I would have, and if even I'd just thought a little more, I would have made this thing a very different shape. Because right now, it makes it kind of hard to make slats in here running parallel when the end is all tapery like this, but I think I'll probably find a solution. I didn't want to take the time to like design this plate because it's really basic. And this is the benefit of the arc droid as a plasma cutter. You can just grab the torch use it like a regular plasma cutter. A fresh kind of deburring tool here, really only for round holes, but, uh, or small round holes. Very satisfying. Wait, where did these come from? Where did these come from? I found them over at the new shop. Uh, oh. They're Chris's stash of candy. Chris always has a stash of candy <laughs> with him at all times. Candy ah. or cookies or something. I went over there to grab these clamps. And he has and Easter candies. Easter eggs. You can't even try to hide it right now. Your uh, hands are full. This wasn't even out. intentional uh, teamwork here to, <laughs> to trick you. Oh no. <laughs> I've 
seems to have worked. Getting closer to finishing this intake grate thing here, and my plan is to make this little uh, comb, you know, hair comb here, and that's going to be that um, fin thing that's on the other intake grate, the little like foil thing, fin scoop, whatever you want to call it. That's going to be that. The intermediary slats, so these are the three primary ones, and the secondary ones are obviously going to go in between these two, and then in this space here, and this space here. So I have that all measured out here. They're gonna be slightly different in size, thickness, and height, just because they don't need to be as beefy. And so I'm gonna cut this plate out, and in theory, that should be able to go in here and locate them all. And also, because it slopes back this way, like right here, there's very, very little hanging out behind it uh, of once, once it's welded in there, like at that angle. So if those slots just go to here, they can float that little inch and a half without any support. Let's see if this works. I say that every time as if like, it's just gonna knock. Well, that makes me really glad that we have one. Look at that. It's almost like I measured it all. See how it has this taper here? That's so it doesn't run into the bolt, or so the bolt can come out there. Unnotched side actually goes in. <laughs> we need to get some more of these. I was just looking at this, pondering some things. And I came to the conclusion that it might not come out. <laughs> it, it doesn't even move. Welds look really nice though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that'll work. I just have to cut the tips off all of those, which I've had thought about it. I could have just not had them go under there, but. I determined that this is in fact impossible to remove currently. And then I determined that uh, I'm just gonna leave it that way for now because basically what I need to do to make it removable is cut the very back off of this one, that one, that one, and that one. Cause they all slope that way. Cause I didn't think about that when I built it. I just got busy building. It would work in theory to take a metal jigsaw blade, metal cutting jigsaw blade and slice them this way. I don't have any blades good enough to do that. So. We're just gonna keep going forward and not continue to make that mistake. And I'm gonna make these other two side pieces here. There's really no water going in on the outside of that, but if I leave that gap open, right here is easily big enough to suck in a rock that would jam up the jet. So, if I put this here, weld it onto the outside of that fin thing, and then put another little tab here like this, that'll make it more rock resistant. I would say 
that this intake is much greater than it was before. Hey! <laughs> editing this part of the video you uh this part of the plastic's flexible enough for the little mm -hmm. wake plates yep perfect a little scoop easy unload process there and now i've never rode it so i should just steal it for a bit yeah you should just take it right now sam <laughs> before it breaks just take it right now you ever driven a boat this small? Oh, of course. It's a pretty common thing, you know? <laughs> no, I am not. It sounds better with the new muffler. It does, it's a little, it? it's, it's not quite as loud, but it's a little, like, deeper. You know, it takes away some of the, like, high-pitched noises. Oh my gosh, it's a lot better than I thought, to be honest. I thought it'd be a lot more unstable. Yep. And uh, it's just, it's a 10. That's a 10 right there. Yeah. Amazing. Well, we'll save it for at long last, it's finally time to blast up a little creek in the jet boat. We got our UHMW plastic on the bottom to protect us from rocks. We got a fancy intake grate to also protect us from sucking up rocks. We even got a radio and a chase truck. We're gonna see how far up this river we can go. It gets all narrow and rocky and the highway follows right along it the whole way. So we'll be able to stop and film and have a good old time. This is Bodie Slim to Gray Falcon. This river is getting lit! believe how rowdy this creek already got. I've been bouncing off of rocks. I already had to jump over a log and got stuck on a sandbar and had to push myself off. It's getting rowdy. It's good. It is violent when you hit a rock. Yeah, it, it's kind of spooky because uh, you can't always see how deep the rocks are. And the faster you go, the smoother it is because you're up on plane. So like you kind of just have to blast and hope for the best. <laughs>
You still with me? I didn't think about this. I tipped it over and now it's flooded. Oh, today is not going smoothly so far. We started with a kind of low battery because we had to, we it didn't want to start this morning. And then so we drained it then and then I've just been stopping and starting a lot for filming purposes and you know, blasting up this river. Uh, but now the battery's dead. We don't have a way to jump it here. Things could be better, they could be worse. We're not sunk. But we need to run back to the truck, grab a wrench, come back, disconnect the battery, take it back to the truck, charge it for a while, bring it back, restart the jet boat, and we'll be good to go. It doesn't look deep enough. I was already looking at that jump. I told you, dude. I think I could, well, I probably shouldn't depth dive from the top. Shee! Shrek! Oh, oh, that would hurt my head a little. My name's Brody Slim, and that's why the boat is called Bodie Slim. And today, I'm gonna show you how to depth dive off this premium slippery rock. We let this charge for like over half an hour, jumper cable to the truck. I assume it was charging, I have no way to test it. Um, I didn't throw in a battery charger, which is unfortunate, but in theory it should have charged. It's a very small battery, should have charged up pretty quick. So back to the boat and see if it works. Oh. <laughs> Let's see if she cranks. I'm not gonna try to actually start it, but we'll give it a little. I mean, that might be enough. Well, that did not work at all. I guess, uh, I guess I'm floating this back down the river. Yeah, uh, it'll be very exciting trying to steer this thing down a river with no power. So, and no bilge pump. I'm gonna keep steadily taking on water. Should be fine. Um, wow, that's a lot of water. Okay, well, whatever, let's keep going. Um, I might need a stick to help like. Let me see if I can break you off a good one from here. That one might be good. Yep. All right, gotta get going before this thing goes with more water. Woo! Oh, this is gonna be very irritating. Too bad it doesn't have a winch. We could just winch up that hill. Yeah. Have you heard of stand-up paddle boarding, but have you heard of stand-up mini jet boating? been back at the boat launch just chatting it up by the truck for like half an hour and uh, we decided to put up the whirly bird and see how Ethan's doing. Oh wow it's so stagnant for such a long time. Uh oh <laughs> I'm pretty far up and I don't see him yet. <laughs> I think Ethan's gonna have a long day in the office. Does it tell your distance away? Uh, yeah it does actually. A thousand meters away from us. He's still trundling along though. <laughs> a thousand meters. 
meters. That's uh, you know about a half is a he, mile. Is he? <laughs> that's all that is. So. Oh, for some reason that sounds further away. Yes, it does when you convert it into our brains. <laughs> Especially because that means he's only halfway. Walk, walk, walk your boat gently down the creek. Oh yeah, you're good. You should do a death diet. Life's a little bleak. <laughs> yeah, that did not seem like that was an easy trip. Yeah, next time I say something's gonna be 5,000% easier, check my map, I'm not good at it. my deepest fear today. Seaweed. <laughs> I really wow. don't like seaweed and I had to dive through like <laughs> nine feet of swindly seaweed to find yep. this. I was doing circles in the boat with it just idling because the jet like wipes away all the ripples and you can just see straight down. So I saw something like it was, I don't know, yeah, eight, 10 feet down. Yeah. And I couldn't see really <laughs> anything at all, except that there was a little pocket that looked like not quite seaweed. But there's <laughs> premium footage on there. Oh yeah, we need it. Wow, I'm cold too. I don't know how I saw that, especially if it was in a hole. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, it's uh, something. It just doesn't look organic. Right. <laughs> said premium day it got a little interesting there for a minute i mean i had to walk a boat down a mile of rapids and rocks and across a small lake edwin crashed the drone into the lake we spent a while looking for that and then edwin somehow lost my truck keys in the like 200 yard walk from the truck to the where we were filming the second half of the day was pretty shrek house 